Super Galaxy Rumble is my all-time favorite skin. Well, besides how much he talks when he does literally anything. The fire in a Yordle's heart never burns out. But now, as a support main, I really have no chance to use it anymore or else be considered a troll. While I was researching for the Ash support video, it's coming soon guys, I swear, I found one Korean pro player who's been testing out Rumble in the support role and at least so far, hasn't lost a game. Rumble for a time after his release was a league staple, being seen in an average of 7.5% of games until he fell behind in 2018 and 2019. We most recently saw huge spikes in Rumble's popularity in the middle of Season 11 where various buffs pushed him ahead of the pack and even into the jungle. But while Rumble is versatile and is played in many roles, he's still pretty much completely untapped in the bot lane. Well, that is until today. The player we're analyzing today is Kellen, pro support player in the LCK for over three years who really plays it all. Just recently this patch, he has started to pick up Rumble into specific matchups to some phenomenal results. Kellen, being a pro player, was easier to research, so let me give you a quick synopsis of his career in case you aren't aware of who he is. In season nine, when he was just eligible to play in the LCK, at the age of 17, almost 18 years old, he was quickly recruited into Jin Air Green Wings, a struggling org who previously wiped out their entire roster sans two players to pick up five new players in 2019, including Kellen. He was used sparingly on the roster, and after Jin Air as a team went 1-17 for the first split, they followed up with a somehow even more unimpressive second split of the season, losing all 18 games in a row to finally be relegated to Challenger Korea. He then, along with many of the other players, left the team and was quickly picked up by Gen G as a backup for life, who is still Gen G's current support player. While he was still used sparingly in the Gen G roster and all the games that he appeared in with them, he accrued more than a 65% win rate in part due to Kellen's versatility. After competing in life's shadow for the entire year, his talents were recognized by one of the newest teams promoted to the LCK, Team Dynamics, who quickly rebranded to Nongshim Red Force in late 2020. Now, having completed a full season with Nongshim, Kellen has truly gotten to shine with his team placing third in the LCK 2021 regional playoffs Playoffs, just barely missing Season 11 Worlds, and being recognized on the All-LCK second team alongside other big names like Khan, Canyon, BDD, and Ruler. In solo queue, he's currently ranked in the top 70 players of Korea as a challenger with 1344 LP, where he has just begun to experiment with Rumble support and has not lost a game yet, and he continues to climb higher and higher to this day. While I'd love to say Autobots roll out and get into the video, we first have to talk about the issues and bugs in Rumble's Junker mech. First off, Rumble's range is extremely short in comparison to other supports which play into his next weakness, his overall squishiness. Rumble typically needs to get in to output damage and be close to melee range, and this is amplified even higher thanks to the support role. While all of our other off meta support videos have a chance of this, Rumble support really may be the champion where your team just ends up flaming you for picking him and maybe even AFK. And finally, and most importantly, the guy is a simp for Tristana. He named his mech after her, and it's time he moved on to bigger and better things. But even with all of these potential problems, Kellen has found a way to make it work. At level 1 in lane, Kellen grabs Rumble's E or Electric Harpoons. He also grabs a sweeper early game because throughout laning phase, you're going to need brush control. Unlike you may have assumed, Rumble support really functions as a poke support in lane with his E, so much so that Kellen even maxes this ability first. Thanks to Electro Harpoons having two charges and Rumble being a manaless champion, this means that you have infinite poke in lane on a pretty low cooldown that does some surprising damage, especially with his poke focus keystone, Comet. Because the ability slows the enemy they hit, to 70% slow if you hit both of them at max level, it's almost a guaranteed hit of Comet every time it's off cooldown. He's really using this ability throughout the whole game to both poke enemies down or chase them down. And beyond all those aforementioned benefits, it also reduces the enemy it hits magic resist up to 30%, making Rumble a good choice with APCs in bot lane. But at level 1, regardless of your lane partner, you don't really want to fight. The fighting should generally start at level 2 when Kellen levels up his Q or Flame Spitter. Flame Spitter is an AoE wall of flames spewed out at at a moderate distance in front of wherever Rumble is facing that deals magic damage every 0.25 seconds to all enemies. I mentioned that Rumble's base damage is pretty high, and to put that into perspective, Flame Spitter at level 1 does 180 damage if you are able to hold it on someone for the whole duration, and the numbers just get zanier with level, which is why he maxes this second. Of course, with this damage, you can help shove out your minion waves if you need to, but again, the range is moderate, so if you're going up against a mage support that outranges you, it would be silly to try and use it against them because 
because they could likely just walk away and out damage you. This is why Kellen never picks Rumble into mage supports. If he did, he'd more than likely just lose lane too hard. The bot lane in Season 11 is still heavily run by supports that want to go in and engage like Leona, Nautilus, or even Thresh, and Rumble can punish melee champions that do this with his heavy damage. So he's never really forcing an engage when he picks Rumble, he's poking down these helpless melee supports with his harpoon, taunting them over and over to provoke them, and then just killing them when they engage and try to all in him and his ADC. At level 3, he levels up his W, or Scrap Shield. This ability is pretty basic, it shields Rumble for a small amount and gives him a small amount of movement speed also. So with that, you can expect that his all-ins get stronger thanks to the damage mitigation, his chase down capabilities get even better with the additional movement speed it gives, and in conjunction with Electro Harpoons, it makes you a complete menace to chase down for the enemy team since you're both slowing them and speeding yourself up. Aside from those obvious ways to use Scrap Shield, what it's really most effective at doing is managing Rumble's passive, Junkyard Titan. The little bar below Rumble's health signifies how much heat he currently has, up to a maximum of 100. Anything above 50 heat is considered the danger zone for Rumble, which makes all of his basic abilities more effective. I could list out all the benefits for each ability, but just know whatever his basic abilities normally do, they do it better now. After using a basic ability, Rumble's heat increases, holds there for 4 seconds, and then will decrease by 10 heat per second if he doesn't use another ability. So both Kellen's and your objective should always be to hover around 40 to 50 heat, so anytime you have to fight, your abilities will do their enhanced effects. So to do this when running around the map, he will use both Flame Spitter and Scrap Shield to generate and maintain his heat while walking around. This way, whenever a fight comes up, he is always prepared to scrap. You should note as well that if you ever hit 100 heat on Rumble, he will overheat, which silences him for 5 seconds, locking him out of his abilities, giving him attack speed, and making his auto attacks also do bonus damage. So in an all-in, where all of your abilities are on cooldown, it's actually a good thing to overheat since you'll be waiting for those cooldowns anyway, and you can do more damage with your auto attacks. That overheated auto attack damage is actually pretty ridiculous, so don't rule it out in a full combo. And speaking of full combos, Rumble's combo doesn't really change whether he has ult or not, so let's talk about that first. Again, you want to be hovering around 40 to 50 heat to ensure you're in the danger zone. Use your W to speed up and get in range while mitigating damage. Use one charge of your E to slow down the enemy you're after. If you're not in range for your Q, use yet another E to slow down the enemy and do more damage. And once in range, use your Q on your main target, hopefully hitting multiple enemies at the same time. At this point, you should be overheated, so while Flame Spitter completes its duration, use your empowered auto attacks from your passive to finish off your combo. Depending on how close you are to an enemy, you could potentially use your shield later or your Flame Spitter sooner, but at the end of the day, every ability should be used when you go in. Finally, at level 6, Kellen levels up his ultimate or the equalizer. Rumble deploys deploys a barrage of rockets in a line skill shot that last on the ground for 4.5 seconds and constantly slow and do damage to enemies on the path over time. The cooldown for this ability is almost silly low for how game changing it can be for a scrap or team fight. It costs no heat to use the equalizer but still cannot be used if you're overheated. Generally, Kellen wants to use this ability on multiple enemies if possible, but as Rumble's longest range ability, he can also use it to finish someone off if they almost get away or to completely cut off an escape route for an enemy unless they want to suffer massive damage. The long range of the equalizer helps as well when mid-game rolls around and objective control and roams become so pertinent in Korean Challenger solo queue. Kellen can surprise enemies out of sight to aid one of his teammates in netting a kill, or can be a complete terror when a big teamfight breaks out over Dragon, Rift-Held, or Baron. And in the mid-game, even if he doesn't have his ultimate, Rumble, kind of similar to Silas' support, can be a terror to 1v1. He has great dueling potential. So if he catches someone all alone, and he's either slightly ahead or even slightly behind, he can more than likely kill them. In team fights, he plays similarly to how he would in lane and with his ultimate. He doesn't like to rush in because of his squishiness and stays around his teammates or important carries. His ultimate during team fights can be used in one of two ways. Number one, over multiple enemies to force them to move out of position and break their formation, or to once again cut off escapes or pick off enemies who are running away. If he can couple his ultimate with CC on his team as well, that person that is caught is more than likely completely dead. For a good example of a team fight, in this clip, Kellen uses his ultimate at the start of the fight to both do some damage, but also force the enemy team to have to walk all the way into their base to continue on the pressure. The whole time, Zed is trying to make a play on his backline to where he is happy to meet him with his carry to provide more damage and quickly take him out. After Zed is dead, the team fight is now 4v5, and his team quickly pushes forward, securing the rest of the kills and eventually the game.
for his build, he starts every game with a Spell Thief's Edge. I believe this is because the speed at which he can acquire the upgraded benefits is much faster with the Poke playstyle, so if you'd like, you could also try Relic Shield since you're more than likely not in the top 100 of Korean solo queue. He then rushes his Mythic item, getting Tier 1 boots and a refillable pot along the way, and always purchasing Imperial Mandate since it synergizes well with the slow from his E and Ultimate. He'll then finish his level 2 boots, always getting Sork Shoes. Up next, he'll also get his other core item, Zonia's Hourglass, for more safety. For his fifth item, he has a few options he could build. Against teams with a lot of healing, Morella Namicon is a good choice, a lot of magic resist, void staff, or neither of those things, Cosmic Drive works well. If the game goes long or he needs some more oomph in his build, he'll buy an elixir of sorcery, and throughout the whole game, as a good support does, he's buying control wards and maybe a ward stone if the game goes very late. For his runes, he takes Comet for more poke damage, Nimbus Cloak for more MS after using a summoner spell, Transcendence against lanes he expects to fight a lot in, or Absolute Focus if he expects his lane to be more passive. And finally, he finishes with Scorch for more damage. He also takes Biscuit Delivery for more sustain in lane, and Time Warp Tonic for burst healing and some more movement speed when potions are active as well. For his Flex Runes, he takes two Adaptive Force and either Armor or Magic Resist depending on his lane opponents. Rumble Support works well with ADCs that can poke like Misfortune or Ezreal, or strong early game ADCs like Draven and Caitlyn. Rumble Support struggles against ADCs with longer range like Ash or Varys, or Mage Supports like Xerath or Zyra. If you guys like this video, I heavily suggest you check out the last off-meta support video on Silas Support. See you guys next time. Peace.